You're watching Ruroni K95's anime review on Project Aiko. Hi, Ruronis. This is your pal Ruroni K95 here, and once again, we get to cover another 80s anime for today's anime review is Project Aiko. Project Aiko is a 1986 Japanese science fiction anime film that had several sequels and a spin off. The film focuses on a happy, go lucky 16 year old red haired, sailor suited teenage schoolgirl Aiko M Magami, who gives owes on her magical adventure from high school to outer space as she struggles to finish her homework, rescue her friends Seiko, and save the Earth from an evil alien invasion. This series has a reference a number of other works of anime, especially from the 1970s as well as 1980s, such as Macross, Fist of the North Star, Gundam, Creamy Mommy, and Captain Harlock as well. The title itself is a reference to the 1983 Jackie Chan movie Project A. Although the film bears no resemblance to Project A, the working ended up the t the working title ended up sticking, which is no pun intended. This was released on June 21st, 1986, and the production company was done by APPP, which or A Triple P, which is known for Robot Carnival and JoJo's Bizarre Adventure OVAs. This is directed by Katsuhiko Nishijima. We should get to that in one moment. So let's review Project Aiko. An alien spacecraft crashed into Gravity on City, wiping out the entire population and leaving massive crater where Graviton City is rebuilt. Students, Aiko Megami, a perking, fun-loving, red-haired, sailor-suited teenage girl, and her best friend Siko Kotobuki, a bubbly, carefree optimist, enter a new year of school at the all-girls Graviton High School. Although Aiko possesses superhuman speed and strength, she considers herself an average teenager. She mostly worries about getting to school on time. Chronically oversleeping her alarm clock each morning, the pair catch the unwanted attention of Biko Dai Tokuji, a rich, snobbish, spoiled, and brilliant fellow student. Biko develops a crush on Seiko and is determined to win her over Biko's attempt to win Seiko over a fall and remember fail and remembering that she was Aiko's rival back in kindergarten. Biko creates a series of me mecha piloted by her team of female followers to attack Aiko each morning, losing each new and more powerful mecha she creates and dons the Aki Akagiyama 23, a powered suit that looks like a bikini. Biko quickly escalates the fight across the school with no restraint. The trench-coated spy D has been monitoring Aiko and Seiko each morning and reporting a lot to a large spacecraft as it approaches Earth. The alien's conclusion is that they have located a lost princess whom they have been looking for. So the aliens finally reach Earth and begin an all-out attack against the Graviton military, which is outmatched by the alien technology. Aiko and Biko's own fight continues across the big city, even as the military and aliens battle. Seiko is abducted in the middle of the confrontation by D, revealed to be a member of the Lepton King of Alpha Cygni, an all-female race of aliens. Seiko is their princess. Witnessing the abduction of Aiko and Biko set aside of their difference in filtering the spaceship, Aiko confronts D and the ship's alcoholic Captain Apolipolita. While Biko rescues Seiko, Biko then reneges on the truce and open fi opens fire on Aiko and D Aiko D and the captain. 
Destroying the ship's navigation system, the vessel lands per cautiously perched on the top of the city's military command tower. Actually, the remains of the per previously crashed ship. Aiko awake happily awakens the next morning, sore from the previous day's adventures, and walks with Seiko to school in their new uniforms. The girls pass by a Villa Shelled D and the captain begging for donations to repair their ship. The film ends with Biko ready for yet another fight, smiling as Eiko appears on the horizon. And that's how you end this anime movie. Yeah, the character Eiko Megami, however, with her superhuman abilities when she runs faster, because her. She's your typical anime character who has superhuman abilities stem from being a, the child of Superman and Wonder Woman, who are apparently married. The latter is even seen ta tauntingly the former's shirt with a distinctive S emblem on it. Yeah. So for the character Captain Napoli Polita. Yeah, it's basically like a parody of Captain Harlock, because, you know, Captain Harlock was created by Leiji Matsumoto. But the most interesting scene that got me amused by is where Eiko fights that schoolgirl who resembles Kenshiro from Fist of the, the Fist of the North Star franchise. Yeah, which that schoolgirl character, Mari, which is basically looks like if Kenshiro had a twin sister... Because, it, you know, Fist of the no this anime movie, Project Aiko, came out in 1986, probably around the same time as Fist of the North Star anime TV series from 1984, as well as Call Me Tonight OVA, Yurisei Yatsura Movie 4, Lum the Forever, as at, which is like three months after the final season of the Yurisei Yatsura anime TV series, I guess. But, yeah... And also for the character Miss Ayumi, who is the teacher at the Gravitons High School. Um, Miss Ayumi is modeled after the lead character of another anime TV series, Creamy Mommy, which is a magical angel girl anime TV show of the 1980s. Looks de definitely modeled after the lead character from Creamy Mommy. Like, if I get to cover one of, and speaking of which, if I get to cover one of the Project Aiko anime sequels and a spin-off, off, then I would have been get to have it for the most part of my pre anime review. But, yeah. Oh, and the production and the releases for Project Aiko, however. Production of the first movie has included several artists who later who would later create other popular works, including Kia Asayama and Atsuko Nagajima. Also noted is the Western source of the soundtrack credited to Joey Carbone and Richie Zito. In Japanese, ko is a common suffix for girls' names like Hanako, Rumiko, and Yuriko, or indeed Eiko, which is, sounds just like Eiko. The literal meaning is child or so. Eiko is generic child a, a more common way to re reference peripheral characters in Japanese contemporary drama in the making of the documentary of for the film Project Eiko anime movie. It is stated that Eiko, Biko, and Siko were intended as generic Jane Doe type names. Oh, and also... Project Aiko was initially planned to be part of the Cream Lemon series, which is a adult pornographic hentai anime OVAs. But the production of the series, it was decided to make it more into a more mainstream title instead of Cream Lemon. So, so they made Project Aiko more like a mainstream type name for an anime OVA or movie, whatever you want to call it. So the only animated during the only sequence animated during its cream lemon days left off it. The revised production such as Biko's private bath scene in a nod to Project Aiko's or Origins as a cream lemon episode. But the owner and the several working girls from the brothel like the pop chaser from Cream and Lemon 
where the director Katsuko Nishijima was one of the animators can be seen in one of the classrooms. Eiko and Biko crash through during a fight sequence in the film, and the director Katsuko Nishijima states possibly, possibly in jest that he took on this project because he was missing some teeth at the time and needed the funding from this film to buy new ones. No pun intended. So the film Project Eiko was released to theaters by Shochiku Fuji on Jul June 21st, 1986, alongside a shorter film titled Going on a Journey, Ami Final Chapter. Pony Video distributed the film via VHS and Laserdisc later in the year. And yes, Project Eiko was released on VHS by Central Park Media, which is the first... Real video released in 1991 in the 90s, they later re released a dubbed version produced by Manga Entertainment to VHS in 1992. The English dub for the rest of the franchise was produced with Ocean Studios instead. After releasing Project Echo on DVD in its original widescreen video format, Central Park Media re later released a collector series version in 2002, which features remastered video and coloring a large number of echo related extras, commentary and interviews by many of the Project Echo staff, and a free Project Echo C soundtrack CD. On May 17, 2011, Eastern Star, courtesy of Discotech Media, released a newly remastered Region 1 Project Echo DVD. It contains many of the extras of the original Central Park Media release, minus the soundtrack CD, which is quite obvious, which is does not include the soundtrack to the anime movie Project Eiko. And speaking of which, Katsuhiko Nishijima, who directed Project Eiko, has, he has directed some other anime such as Labyrinth of Flames, Agent Aika, Sailor Victory, Megami Paradise, Hono no Tenko Sei. And he also did a Aika R16 Virgin Mission, G Taste, Nozoki Ana, and every other anime. He also directed Project Aiko Gray Side slash Blue Side, which is he which is one of his more recent works. Oh yeah, and the trench goat guy and the character D in Project Aiko in the Japanese version he was voiced by Tesho Genda who's known for the voices younger Tagoro in Yu Yu Hakusho, Lum's ex-boyfriend Ray in Yurisei Yatsura. He also voices Captain Tenniel's impersonator in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Stardust Crusaders. He also does the voice as Violence Jack in Violence Jack Harem Bomber OVA. And he also does the Japanese voiceover for Optimus Prime in the Transformers as well. He also did other animes in general, in the majority, I guess. So, yeah, because Project Echo was released in, on June 21st, 1986, which is probably like like three, mo three months after year the final season of Yurisei Yatsura anime TV series, because this was the 80s. And yeah, this was this came out probably around the same time as both Fist of the North Star anime TV series from 1984 and the Fist of the North Star 1986 anime movie. Same with Call Me Tonight anime movie, uh, OVA, as well as Yurisei Yatsura movie six, Lum the For or movie four, Lum the Forever. I for I guess. And this movie came out, which is probably within a year after Odin, Photon, Sailor, Starlight. If you want to talk about 80s anime. So that's going to be it for my anime review on Project Echo for the first time. Thank you for watching. But before we go, here's my thoughts on Project Echo. When I first watched Project Echo, this got me to get the ball rolling if I can cover one of the sequels of Project Echo as well as the spin off. But that's probably for the most part in my future anime reviews, I guess. Help subscribe for content. My anime plan link in the description down below. You can share this video on your Twitter and Facebook if you have Twitter and Facebook account and all social media. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up by clicking on the like button on this video. Feel free to leave it in the comments in the comment section below on this video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, RuroniK95. Feel free to join my channel, especially if you're new to my channel. Hit the notifications bell button. Be sure to get notified as well. And keep it otaku for this anime review and I got another anime review coming up. Stay tuned for my next anime review because 
I've got another anime review to cover, since I've already reviewed Project Aiko. Stay tuned for my next anime review on His and Her Circumstances. Stay tuned for my next anime review on His and Her Circumstances, because you won't want to miss another anime review.